Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release 32 Malasana Street, and it's a Shutter exclusive, and it hits Shutter on Thursday, October 22nd. When I'm putting up this review, it is ahead of that release date, so because of that reason and because of the fact that it's a 2020 film, there will be no spoilers in this review. So feel free to watch this and get and let it give you a good idea of if you want to watch this film or not. But I will say up front, this is one of the Shutter exclusives that I think you definitely should see, especially if you're into the subgenre of haunting films. Now, I will say that I am not into that subgenre. I usually don't find it that interesting for me personally. Uh, it usually doesn't suck me in. But the fact that it actually sucked me into this film and I feel like it's really well done for a subgenre that I don't like that much, it's a good film. It, I mean, it's more than a good film. So anyway, you'll get my rating at the end, but just know this. You should check it out. It's directed by Albert Pinto, uh, who did films Killing God and one that's going to be coming out, Asylum, Twisted Horror, and Fantasy Tales, which I assume is an anthology. Uh, it was written by, and this is what gave me pause about the film, it's written by four separate people, and usually when you have more people involved with writing a script, it gets more convoluted, it's not as strong as a of a story, but not the case with this. Written by Ramon Campos and Gemma R. Nira, who had written lots and lots and lots of TV shows, episodes of TV shows, Spanish language, uh, as well as David, uh, I'm sorry, David Orea and Salvador S. Molina. Uh, it is in Spanish, this film, so just know that. Uh, so if you hate subtitles, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I get it if you're not in subtitles because reading, you know, uh, subtitles actually gives you a headache. I know people who have that problem, so that's fine, but... If you don't like reading subtitles because you're just like, well, I just don't like reading when I'm watching a movie, get over it because you're missing so many good films out there, so many good films out there, and this being a good film out there that you should be checking out. Anyway, the synopsis of this, something really quick, it's basically about a family who moves to the city and they are kind of trying to get a fresh start. They move from a more rural area to a more city area and it's kind of just about them trying to adjust Meanwhile, where they've moved, some things start to happen. Like I said, it's kind of a haunting subgenre film, so you can kind of figure out where it goes from there without giving spoilers. From the beginning scene, you're already getting a very good uh, sense of what Pinto's style is as a director, and it's a really great style, in my opinion. A really great style. Um, it's, it's dark, the lighting... It looks mainly like they use a lot of natural lighting in the film, which I really, really like because in the setting of the apartment that they're in, in within the city, this family, uh, it looks kind of dark. It looks a little creepy. It looks a little dingy, and that really helps with the atmosphere, and that is one of the big things with the film is I feel like the atmosphere that is created from the get-go, from the first scene that's in the past, by the way, and then they skip forward um, a while, uh, it's so good. It, it just sets you up, and I think they they do a good job of staying within that environment, within that atmosphere the whole time. It just has the same feel throughout, which is a really great, creepy, dingy, dark feeling, which is perfect because when you stay in that, it, it creates this tense feeling of you never know when something's going to happen. So you're kind of always on edge to some degree, and that's how I kind of felt with this film. The overwhelming majority of it happens in that apartment, and because of the way it looks, because of the way the lighting is, because of the directing, the cinematography, and the acting's really good too, uh, it just, it, it immerses you and it keeps you there. And, and that's one of the biggest things that I really enjoyed about the film is that you're there and you don't really get much of any reprieve from this feeling of something does happen and then feeling like something else is going to happen kind of at any moment in the film. So that's really well done. Now, the natural lighting I was talking about, that them it looks like they're mainly using natural lighting, that works really well because it casts a lot of interesting shadows in addition to not lighting the rooms in the apartment too much to the point where they wouldn't look creepy, they wouldn't look dingy, it wouldn't look dark. Um, keeping it lower light helps where you can actually see the actors and see what's going on and the, it's actually lit, but you're not taking too much away from the actual atmosphere of it. So, and... Pinto's style is really good. It, it just looks great. This film looks outstanding, and that really helps to add 
to those creepy, scary moments, which, by the way, they do have jump scares in this. I know that's not a big surprise because a lot of horror does, but effective jump scares. Good jump scares that got me a few times and good jump scares that when you experience them, you're not like, oh, that was a stupid jump scare. You're like, ooh, that was that was a legitimately well-placed, uh, good-looking jump scare. So I quite enjoy that aspect of it. The shooting location is kind of, it's got this interesting kind of like classic feel to it, uh, the apartment, but it also, like I was saying, is like dark and creepy at the same time. So I really like the shooting location. It works very well for the story. The family dynamic and the individual relationships in this, I think are set up pretty well and that's done very early on, which is where it's obviously the most important because you're gonna need to know these characters. You're gonna need to know the family dynamic and not just the family dynamic as a whole, but the family dynamic as in, you know, how these two characters interact or how these two characters interact or, you know, those types of dynamics. So it's, it's very good. So you get a, a very nice sense of who these people are and what kind of drives them. Now, there are some things that you don't know. You don't know everything from the get-go, and there are things that you learn later that have a part in the story, which are quite interesting and revealing and good. Um, there are some, like I said, there are good jump scares, and the music, the music ends up being used to great effect with the jump scares. Now, one of the things that I talk about a lot is when the music becomes too much in a horror film. It kind of like knocks what's going on the screen kind of the side and you focus just so much and on the music because it's so loud because it's so over the top now this film doesn't do that there's always kind of this low level of like a creepy uh interesting music going on with the film but when the jump scares happen it gets much louder and it gets more intense and normally i would complain about that but Here's the difference. A lot, what a lot of films do is they start that music before the jump scare happens. This film, they do that very loud, very over the top intense music as the jump scare happens. And that's fine because that's an enhancement to the jump scare as opposed to giving you an idea that the jump scare is coming. And then when it actually hits, it's not as effective because the music was already telling you that that's happening. So it's done effectively. They did, they did a nice job. Uh, I already talked about that. There's a callback from the beginning of the film that gives you a very uh-oh moment in this film. And I think maybe it's about half an hour in or so, maybe a little bit before that. Uh, there's something in particular in the very beginning portion, which is in, set in the past, that then happens about a half an hour-ish. I might be wrong on that into the film it's a particular there's a particular item that comes into play and as soon as you see that you're just like oh no for for the sake of the characters you're like oh no here we go but for the sake of you that's when the stuff starts really getting good so yeah the cg in this looks good i like the computer graphics uh and they're smart about the computer graphics too from what i could tell they look good on their own but additionally they do what i like which is you don't get to focus on it too long. It's kind of like quickly used in shots. So that's the best way to effectively use CG, in my opinion. Uh, I already talked about the, the atmosphere that keeps things tense. There is a good reveal at the end that ties a lot together. Um, and it creates some interesting parallels in the film as well. That's the other thing. There are there are parallels in the film. You don't see it until there's a, an interesting idea um, or reveal really at the end, like I was saying, there's some things you don't really know about, not necessarily the family. There are things you don't know about the family that you end up finding out later, but there are also things that you don't know about the apartment and the situation with that apartment that ends up being revealed. And once that is revealed, that is where you start to see some parallels play out in the film that you're not aware of in, up until that point. And it makes you kind of think back and say, oh, okay. Because now when this is like this, I see how that's a parallel earlier on in the film. And yeah, so think a bit harder once once you're done with this film and you, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It doesn't seem like there's a lot going on as far as story, but there is. It seems very straightforward. It seems very simplistic as you're going. But then once the reveals of some information end up happening, then you realize, oh, this is way more complicated I don't want to say complicated because it makes it sound like it's a bad thing. Uh, there's w just way more to it. 
there's a lot more to the story once you hit the reveal and then you're just like oh okay i thought we were dealing with something very simple and straightforward not the case and i like that i like that the sound design in this is excellent i love the way it sounds it's very very good uh it really helps with creating and maintaining that tension um it's just like little noises of certain things that the characters do or you know noises that happen you know, not not tied to anything the characters do that just happen in the apartment that are meant to be done for effect. They just sound great. Amazing sound design. Like I said, the acting is really good too. Really enjoyed the acting. There is a theme in this of trying to start a new chapter in life and the unknowns that end up coming up across that journey when you're kind of going across it. Obviously, it's in the context of his family, kind of trying to start anew because they move to the city and they don't have jobs or anything, so they they really have to try to get their footing immediately. So, the challenges of caring for an elderly family member ends up coming up on this. It's not a huge theme. It's not like the main theme of it. It's not a big theme. But it is a theme that comes up. And I know that this is, um, it's not something that comes up all that much in like American films. Because we don't have a society where we live with our elders typically. Sometimes that happens. But in a lot of other cultures, a lot of other countries, um, you know, elders will will live with the younger generations. And for that reason, there is this constant um, aspect to the family dynamic of having to take care of an older person in the same, in, you know, in the same house. So, um, you know, me being an American, born in America and always lived in America, seeing something like that, it, it doesn't it doesn't jive with my family situation, but I can see how it plays into a family situation. So, just saying. The pressures placed on young, the younger generation within a family unit who are trying to kind of forge a secure future ends up being a big part of this too. Like, you see a lot of pressure on on the younger people within the family. And I I understand that that, kind of, that also plays into the whole idea of, like, you know, three generations really living within one house and this concept of, you know, going to a new place and really trying to get your footing and, and have a new start. Everyone's got to pitch in if you want to have the best life that you can as a family. And that doesn't necessarily afford the younger people in the family to just have a carefree childhood or to grow up maybe the way they want to or a lot of people see that they should. So that's kind of at play in the film as well. And then the ultimate theme is how issues within a family can infect all the members and negatively affect their lives, making it hard to get away from the effects of those issues. Basically, that if there's something... If there's a, a situation created within the family that is so bad or becomes so toxic that it follows the members no matter what. So I'm trying to be as vague about it as I can, but if you hear me say that and then you watch the film, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Or if you've already watched the film and you're hearing this, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. You should. So anyway... What am I going to rate 32 Malasana Street? Obviously, you've heard me say a lot of good things about it. I, I do think maybe it's a little bit too long in length. I would have liked it to be cut down too much, but that's kind of a little thing. Um, I know some people would probably like it even more than I liked it, but out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving it a very solid four-star rating. I would say definitely check it out. And like I said, I'm not even into like the whole ghost uh, haunting subgenre. I really typically don't like that, but this film really pulled me in and I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So this is one to catch for sure. Uh, thanks for checking this out real quick. Um, thanks for checking this out though. Uh, really, really quick. Uh, put some comments down there. We can talk about this film and spoilers totally fine in the comments. So everyone know when you look at the comments, there may very, very well be spoilers. We can talk about this film. Do me a favor, real quick, hit that subscribe button. Uh, that's your best way to repay me. It literally takes you a second, and it is very, very painless. And I really do appreciate it. Honestly, every time I see, I get an email that says I have a new subscriber, it really makes me happy. It drives me to keep doing these videos because I've been doing this for a while. I don't get paid or anything, but it's fun as long as I know people are are taking it in and, and really internalizing it and enjoying the videos. So please hit that subscribe. And if you do, please also hit the notification bell because then that way you know when I'm putting up a new review or an unboxing or doing a live stream.
But regardless, I do appreciate you checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.